The year is 2100, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is now playable on motorcycles. Alright, welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be playing Snake Eye Watery Combo. First, I'm going to show you how to do the combo, and next... I'm going to be showing you some gameplay of the deck on the ladder. Now, one thing to note, this combo is going to let you pop at least five cards, assuming opponent doesn't have some crazy interruption. And you can actually pop an additional card if you do the combo this way. All right, so you're not going to see this anywhere else. Opponent's got an element saber. That's not going to be doing anything, but they do have two back row. So let's hope they can't interrupt us too much. We do have cross designate, but not sure if that's going to be effective against our bot opponent who is letting us practice today. Let's start out by normal summoning the Ash. You can, you're going to have to have Ash to do this combo with one card. It is possible to do similar plays with multiple cards, but uh, it starts getting complicated and it's going to be depending on your hand. So I'm just going to show you the Ash combo for now. And when you watch the games on ladder, you'll see how to do more plays with the deck. Poplar, you search for it. It's going to activate, summon itself for free. Very amazing. Poplar is going to search. What are you going to search for? You are going to search for the Snake Eyes Field Spell. All right, now I just happen to have it in the hand already. So we're going to search for something else, but we're not going to use this card. So Sinful Spoil Subversion just added. But keep in mind, we search for the Divine Temple here. All right, next up, we are going to uh, say cancel. Thank you. Activate the effect of our Flint Karibo to summon itself with the Snake Eyes Poplar. Poplar, when it's sent to the graveyard, is going to... Attach itself back to the field as a spell trap. So it is a floater. It's going to keep floating. All right, now what do you do next? Next up, we're going to activate our Snake Eyes Ash. You're going to Ash, activate, targeting your Poplar. And you're going to summon from the deck your one copy of Snake Eyes Oak. Oak get on the field. That's going to activate, summon one of your Link Ones from the graveyard. does not matter which one. We're going to get the Ash back. Yes. After we summon the Ash, we're going to activate our field spell, Divine Temple. Divine Temple is here. Cancel. Yes, we would like to place a face-up card. And you're going to place your face-up Flam Burger. The Flam Burger is here. We're going to get cooking. All right. And now that we have the Flam Burger on field, you're going to activate your Oak. Oak is going to send itself and the Flam Burger you put in the spell trap zone using the field spell. It's going to send those two to the graveyard. And you're going to summon your other Flam Burger. you got to have two copies of the Flam Burger to make this combo work. So we get our Flam Burger here. And then the Flam Burger we sent to the graveyard is going to activate. It's going to summon two level 1 fires from the graveyard. you got to have two in there. Otherwise, it won't activate. There we go. we got our two things back. And now we have so many materials. We can do all sorts of things. But here's the best play. All right. We're going to start off by making Nightmare Phoenix using Snake Eye Oak and a Link Rebo. You don't have to make Nightmare Phoenix here. You can make any Link to Fire, but the advantage of the Nightmare Phoenix, obviously, is we can discard a card and pop back row, right? So we can discard any card here. I'm going to discard this Sinful Spoils. We don't need to discard this. Could have discarded anything. We're going to pop opponent's back row. Opponent had a Call of the Haunted, very spicy opponent, but it's not going to work on us today. Next, we're going to summon the Promethean Princess, very powerful card, all right? You're going to use their Link 2 as two materials, then use one of your Link 1s. Very powerful card. It has a restriction. Well, as long as you control it on the field, you can only summon fire monsters, um, which is not too much of a restriction, to be honest. We're going to activate the effect of the Promethean Princess, and we can resummon one of our monsters from the graveyard. We're going to get back our Link 2 Fire Link, all right? So that's why you got to summon a Fire Link 2 doesn't have to be Nightmare Phoenix, can be any Fire Link too. All right. All right, and now we're going to make the Amphibious Swarm Ship using Promethean Princess as three materials and our other Link 1. That's going to give us the Swarm Ship. Swarm Ship is here. Get swarming. Now we're going to be summoning our Watery Monster. This is why this is a water combo. This is why a water deck, the Zeolantis. Using Swarm Ship, which is a Link 4, as all four materials, you can just summon your Zeolantis on the field. And Zeolantis is amazing. All right, he has a bunch of effects. If opponent has no monsters from this position, you can just go to battle and pop their last back row and attack. But it's not lethal. We want to get lethal here. Opponent does have to have a monster for this to work, but we're going to activate the effect of Zeolantis. Banish all monsters on the field. Then we get to resummon them all. So we're going to resummon the opponent's monster. We're going to resummon our Zeolantis in the middle of our field here. 
We're going to summon our Nightmare Phoenix. Does not matter the, the position, really. And then we're going to summon our Flamberg just over here on the off on the side. So he stays out of the way. Doesn't cause any problems. And hold on a second. We opponent summoned a monster. All right. So that's going to trigger the Promethean Princess in the graveyard. It's going to activate. It's going to pop our Link 2 Nightmare Phoenix and an opponent's monster. Pop that Nalu. That's pop number two, if you're counting at home. It's going to summon itself back to the field. And because a Link 2 was popped, our Amphibious Swarm Ship is going to activate in the graveyard. And we can pop another card on the field, destroy a card on the field. So we're going to banish our Swarm Ship, pop an additional card, all right? That's, that's our third pop, I believe. We popped a Spell Trap, we popped a Monster, we popped another card. And now, when we go to battle, all right, this is lethal damage. We go to battle, and we can activate our Zeolantis, all right? This is lethal, all right? Let's just... Look, show you. 8,200. We could just attack for lethal. If opponent has any other stuff in the way, we can activate our Zeolantis right now. Because we have two co-link monsters, we can pop two cards on the field. So we're going to pop our own monsters here just to show how much popping we have. And that is lethal damage. So many pops. So much interaction. So much power. And it's all thanks to the watery Zeolantis. Let's see how it works on the ladder. Let's get to the games. All right, on to the games. If you like the channel, make sure to subscribe. We'll have more watery content in the future. And of course, you got to get in the mental headspace of your opponent. That's why we're playing with this water field. We got all the water accessories. We got fishes everywhere. Let's show it off. All right, we're going first this time with a poplar in the hand. And most of the combo videos will not show you combos with just poplar because there's kind of so many directions you can go. Um, I guess it's not really worth showing, but let's just show off a little poplar combo. Poplar into Link Karibo. It's going to summon itself back to the Spell Trap Zone. We're going to use that Sinful Spoils we searched for with the Poplar to get the Ash. Ash is going to activate. It's going to add another Poplar to the hand. It's going to Special Summon itself. And you can see how ex like how much extension we have. Now, I'm using the Divine Temple here so I can send my Flamberge to the Graveyard. Get another copy of Flamberge. Flamberge is going to activate Summon 2 Level 1s from the Graveyard. So it's, we're just extending all over the place. We could do anything with our Links at this point. But I'm going to just go into a Masquerina. And I'm going to link again into the Princess. Then I'm going to activate the Princess effect. Summon the other Flamberge. Link off into the Amblo Whale. The Amphibious Swarm Ship Amblo Whale. And I'm going to use the effect of my Flamberge to set our IP Masquerina in our Spell Trap Zone face up. It's not set. I guess it's activated as a I I continuous IP Masquerina. And then on the opponent's turn... Activate the effect, effect of your Flamberg to summon the IP Mask Arena. Flamberger is here. Opponent playing Blue Eyes, summoning the alternative dragon that's going to let us trigger the Promethean Princess. Summon itself. Pop a fire monster we control. Summon that Princess. That's going to trigger the Flamberg in the graveyard. Summon two level one fire monsters. Opponent triggering their Jet Dragon. The Blue Eyes Jet Dragon has a lot of effects, all right? And I don't know all of them. Look at this, look at this essay here. No one has time to read that. Activate the Snake Eyes Ash. Activate the Poplar. Poplar get popping. Search for a Sinful Spoils for our next turn. Subversion. Subversion is just a spell. It turns a monster into a continuous trap. Now we're gonna activate the IP Masquerade and I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna make the, the old Underworld Goddess here, but I forgot. Control the Promethean Princess it means you can't do that. So we're going to just make a second copy of the Amblo Will. That's why we got a second Amblo Will, right? And most of the lists don't play two of these. I am recommending heavily you play two of the Amblo Will. It's, it's a, kind of a core card to the strategy working out. We're going to summon Link Karibo, triggering our Poplar to go back into the Spell Trap Zone. Opponent going to battle. Link Karibo, Shrinkify the Jet Dragon. Opponent attacks with the Jet Dragon before damage step. You got to activate Imperm to negate. They've already committed to the attack. But if you wait till later, their effect goes on the, the chain. And you can't respond to it because it's during the damage step. So we got to Imperm in response to the attack declaration. That's just Yu-Gi-Oh, all right? It's so easy, all right? You could explain this to, to a small five-year-old child and they would completely understand. Amphibious Swarm Ship kills that Jet Dragon. Opponent sets two back row. And, of course, we have the opportunity to try and do our combo. Of course, we don't need to do the full combo with Ash because we already have so much stuff on the board. Let's just go straight into the Zeolantis. Turn our Blow Ship into... The Zeolantis. Activate. Resummon everything. Resummon everything on the field. 
as I described before, get our swarm ship here, get our flamber's dragon off on the side, get back our snake eyes ash. That's going to trigger the princess, pop a monster on the field, summon the princess. All right. That's going to trigger the jet dragon. Jet dragon's going to come back. All right, but that's fine because uh, we only use one of our pops and we have a bajillion more pops. Let's activate Promethean Princess. Resummon our Flamber's Dragon. And, you know, I could go into, and this would have been smart, all right, to play around this, but could have gone into Nightmare Phoenix and still summoned Ash. Would have had more than lethal, but uh, I just want to show off my, my Zeolantis play. Let's just pop. We could have popped three cards on the field because we've got three co-links. Did target this back row. It did not get popped. I'm assuming Jet Dragon has some sort of effect that says other cards you can't control can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects. It does, in fact, say that. It is on the card. It is the first thing. But I'm like, you know, at this point, I'm committed. We're getting in. And I have no fear of opponents. Definitely not Mirror Force. Opponent flipping up that Mirror Force. That's uh, that's going to be a problem. Except, is it? All right. All my cards get popped. Everything popped. All right. Are we done for? Have, is this over? Do we get Blue Eyes White Dragon? Well, no. Amphibious Swarm Ship going to activate. Other Amphibious Swarm Ship going to activate. We're going to resummon. We're going to trigger the effect of Flamberge. The Flamberger is activating in the graveyard to summon two level ones. Back to the field, we get Ash, we get Poplar. We pop the Poplar with the Amphibious Swarm Ship. We resummon our Mascarena. All right, probably also would have been better to summon the Princess with the Amblo Whale, but, uh, you know, that's slightly more damage. But you know what? I, I did some math and I figured that I actually don't need it. With the Ash, we're going to activate Search for another Ash. Or a copy of the Poplar, since we already have Ash in hand. And unfortunately, all right, the the Ash says, if it's added to your hand except by drawing it, you can special summon this card. But uh, it didn't summon itself. Why is that? All right, probably because we're in the battle phase or something. Oh, we're in the damage step, maybe, because of Mirror Force. Who knows? All right, it didn't summon itself. But it's all good, all right? It's all good. We got all this damage here. Opponent, all the way down to 300 and you're thinking wait a minute that's not lethal damage you used all your monsters to attack well we got one additional play for that exact seize damage we're going to activate link rebo in the graveyard tribute our level one and get an additional 300 damage our field spell was pumping up all our level ones and that is how you get lethal with your snake eyes using watery monsters love to see it let's go on to the next game on to the next game, and you can see what's going on. Why is my field garbage? Well, um, I forgot to set my field, and I played a couple games. So sometimes I'm going to have a garbage field. Please don't don't be mad. Forgive me for my sins, all right? Opponent ashing our Seeker's Sinful Spoils. Of course I could activate my Cross Set Designate and negate the Ash, but um, I got a Diabell Star in hand already, which is what I was going to search for. So let's just let the Ash go. Let it go. We're going to fire off our Seeker of Sinful... Or sorry, our Diabell Star summon itself discarding our imperm opponent has effect veiler luckily we're running an effect veiler at one so we can cross out designate that effect veiler opponent has the bistral the pizza hut is summoning itself pizza hut banishing that effect veiler to summon itself we negate the effect veiler and we're not done we're not done we are not done diabell star set this original sinful spoils here uh, Pizza Hut searching for a dragon monster. We're going to activate Triple Tactics Thrust because opponent controls a monster. We can search for our Triple Tactics talent and Pot of Greed. Opponent made a big mistake letting us Pot of Greed here. Drawn into the Poplar and the Seeker Simple Spoils. Let's send to the graveyard, get our Ash, and just start comboing. Add the Poplar to the hand. Activate the effect of Poplar. Summon itself. Search for a Seeker Simple Spoils card. We're going to get the Temple. Temple going to activate, set a Snake Eye Oak in the Spell Trap Zone. We're going to go into Link Rebo. Poplar. Going to get popping. We're going to activate our Snake Eye's Ash. Um, should have actually, that was a mistake. Should have targeted the Oak there, but it's all good. We get our Snake Eye's Flamberg here. We're going to banish and draw an additional card. Then we're going to Link 2 into Hita because opponent has a Fire Monster in the graveyard. You're going to pay attention to this. If opponent ever Ash Blossoms you, Hita will let you extend. Sending to the graveyard, the Flamberg is going to trigger it. Some two monsters back from the graveyard. We're going to go into the Bestower of Flames, Promethean Princess. Resummon the Flamberger. Flamberger, get back here. 
And we're going to activate our Flamburger, set our Diabell Star in the Spell Trap Zone, go into the Amphibious Swarm Shift, set that Spell Trap that we drew into the Sinful Spoils. Opponent searching for a Fallen of Albaz. Interesting. Very interesting. And it's the opponent's turn. All right, opponent, what are you going to do? Start by activating our Flamberg. Flamberg. Summon the Diabell Star so that we have a Diabell Star Mar monster to pop with our Sinful Spoils Betrayal. All right. It's going to activate and search. Opponent firing off the Bishop Aldrake. Banishing our Link Rebo from the graveyard. Summoning that Bistral. We're going to set the Sinful Spoils Subversion. We're going to activate, because opponents summon a monster, the effect of our spell in the field spell zone to summon one of our continuous spell monsters, getting that Snake Eyes Oak. It's going to summon from the graveyard the Ash. Ash going to activate, search for a copy of itself. Any monster that searches for itself is uh, probably uh, not going to be long for this world, all right? Eventually, Konami is going to ban this. That's why it's the only SR in this deck, all right? They made this an SR because they were, like, threatening. They're like, we're going to hit this one when we eventually do, but not for a while. we still got lots of fiery cards to come out. Opponent normal summoning a level 4 tuner, Golden Sword Soul, and Synchroing into a Big Chungus, but I am not afraid of the Big Chungus. Let's fire off the Promethean Princess, pop a fire monster we control, and a card the opponent controls, a monster they control. And in response, we're going to Sinful Spoils Betrayal, negate the effect of the Supreme Sovereign to protect itself, and send our Diabell Star to the graveyard. Get negated, opponent. Opponent gets negated. Opponent gets popped by the Princess. And Princess is back on the field. The Swarm Ship is going to activate in the graveyard and resummon the Hita. Opponent playing a Dimensional Fisher probably should have done that first. Not sure why opponent waited so long to play that Fisher. They're going to go to battle, hit our Fire Charmer. That is a mistake because a Link 2 or Link 3 or lower monster is destroyed by battle or card effect. The Amphibious Swarm Ship is going to banish itself and pop card on field to pop that Fisher. Opponent. You got one card left in the hand. We know what it is, and it is not a threat. All right, if you remember earlier, they added that uh, that monster, Albaz, Fallen Albaz, to the hand. And we got lethal damage with our dinky little level ones getting baboosed by the Divine Temple opponent. Is done. That is Albaz, Bistrals, popped by the Watery Fire Monsters. Let's go. On to the next game. On to the next game. We got... A lot of cards in the hand, including a wanted secret sinful spoils, which we are going to fire off right now. Opponent Ash blossoming us. All right, well, uh, we have this dramatic snake eyes, which we can use to place a Diabell Star monster in our spell trap zone, but that's not really much of a play. It's a very a little play. All right, a little tiny play. We're going to set our back row. We're going to draw a card. Uh, or sorry, we're not going to draw a card. We're going to activate the effect in the end phase of our... Hold on a second. Dramatic Snake Eye Chase. Summon our Diabell Star Black Witch. And uh, that's our board. Right, we got Negate. We got another Negate. We got Maximum C. Let's see what the opponent can do. On the next turn, we got the Wanted Secret Sinful Spoils opponent. What can you do? Pwn and playing Dark Magicians. Let's activate Negate that circle. This card can negate any card. Any face-up card in the field can be negated by the Betrayal. So Circle Betraying the Dark Magician player. Firing off the Magician Souls, we're going to Maxi in response. Dark Magician plays actually kind of well into Maxi because they don't summon a lot. They just summon their one Dark Magician and they start banishing. Dark Magician on the field. Opponent thinks they can get banishing, but we negated all their this card for the entire turn. So get negated opponent. Opponent going to battle. We're going to search for a Diabell Star. Opponent going to hit us for Dark Magician E 2500. But are we in danger? No. I, I feel no fear. I feel no fear at all. Let's draw a card with one at Secret Sinful Spoils. Shuffle back into the deck. Get our Flamburger by drawing it. Diabell Star Black Witch. Get on the field. Search for that original Sinful Spoils. Send it. Get summoned in the Snake Eyes Ash. And now we're Wombo Combo City. Poplar to the hand. Poplar activate. We've done all this without the normal summon. This deck doesn't even need to normal summon to do all of its plays. So it is a bit weak to the maximum C. So you gotta be careful about Max C when you're playing this deck. Link Rebo, resummon, get the Flamburger using the effect of the Snake Eyes Ash. Flamburger, send the Dark Magician to the Spell Trap Zone. Summon IP Mascarena, trigger the Flamburger, summon a bunch of monsters back to the field, make that Princess. 
Princess get activated. Resummon the Flamburger. Summon that Swarm Ship. And what are we doing? We, we, did, we missed Lethal, all right? We probably could have got Lethal. Uh, again, this is an older game, so I wasn't as experienced with the combos. But uh, this was probably a situation where we could have definitely gotten lethal and popped opponent's entire field. So uh, don't be mad at me, all right? I know, uh, I know I showed you the combo already, so you already know how to do it. Let's Sinful Spoil Subversion put our own Ash into the Spell Trap Zone so we can activate our Flamburger to summon it during opponent's turn. Opponent, firing off a second circle. Still, I am not afraid. I am not afraid of the circle. Opponent, Soul Servant. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute. They don't have any Dark Magicians in their graveyard. How are they going to draw? This is still Dark Magician, even though it's on the field as a spell trap. Soul Servant says, during your main phase, banish, draw cards equal to the number of Dark Magicians on the field. Uh, so he's still Dark Magician, even though he's a spell trap. Let's activate our Flamburger. Summon the Ash. Opponent. Going to reveal a card on top of the deck. We're going to summon our Poplar. Poplar going to get activated. And you can see the power of this deck. Even though I'm not playing it super well, we just have so much material. We can get so many bodies on the field each turn. Opponent. Summoning Dark Magician again. They're going to get to banish a singular card. We have so many cards. Like, does it even matter what they banish? Promethean Princess gets summoned and pop a card. Um, I should have popped my Flamburger to avoid it getting banished. But uh, you know what? We don't even need to play well. Like I said, we don't need to play well. Summon that Promethean Princess. Flamburger gets banished. Opponent not even going to wait. They're like, that's it. I've had enough. I'm done. Dark Magician's getting clapped, as is tradition. By me playing terribly, this was my first game with the deck. And you can see the power by what happens when I play terribly. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We have a very interesting hand. We got the Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils. Flamburger is kind of useless in the hand, but uh, we do want to run two of them. Opponent Max C and us. Luckily, Ash Blossom will stop the Maximum C from drawing our opponent any cards. Jet Synchron, also very powerful. Sort of a free link, too, uh, as long as you have a card to discard. We're going to get that Die Bell Star Black Witch. Witch discard the Jet Synchron to summon itself. And you know what? In retrospect, all right, we probably should have sent the Flamburger or the Sinful Spoils to the graveyard so that I could normal summon the Jet Synchron, but it's all good. Die Bell Star Black Witch. Gonna set our Sinful Spoils. We're gonna activate the Sinful Spoils, get the Oak. And Oak's gonna activate. Opponent has an Imperm as well. Opponent has interaction for days here. Uh, that was a good reason why I should have kept the Jet Synchron in the hand. Because then I could have normal summoned the Jet Synchron and gone into a Link 2, gone into a Link 3 for free. But opponent negating the Jet Synchron. Or sorry, negating the Ash. We're going to go into Link Rebo here. Activate the effect of our Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils. And we draw into a Pot of Greed, Triple Tactics Talent. Let's get drawn to. Pot of Greed, activate. Draw into a Max C, which is actually super useful here. Let's fire off Jet Synchron. Discarding the Flamburger. It was sad. I was trying to get two level one fires in the graveyard when I discard the Flamburger so that it would activate um, and summon two fires for free from my graveyard, but couldn't figure out a line that made that work. We're just going to normal summon Max C, go into the Promethean Princess, re summon from the graveyard our. Our boy. Where is he? The Flamburger. And then the Flamburger. Would let us go into the Amblo Whale and then resummon two level twos, go into Ivy Masquerina, or we could just leave the Flamburger on the field. Opponent, though, they got a Ghost Spell. Opponent had Imperm, they had Maxi, and they have Ghost Spell as well. Uh, we do not run a Ghost Spell, so we cannot negate it with Crossout. So we just got our Promethean Princess on the field, and that is it. Let's set our two back row and pass the opponent and see what they can do. Opponent, you got three cards. Can you do anything? Opponent has no starters. Their hand must have just been more Ash Blossoms. Um, very sad for the opponent, but shows you how powerful this deck is. Played through three pieces of interaction, still had a board. Not a great board, but we did have one. An opponent didn't have any gas left. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. Amazing hand, of course. Any hand with the Ash is an amazing hand. Let's get summoning. Opponent hitting us with the Ash Blossom. Luckily, Crossout Designate is going to negate. Crossout, negate the Ash. Ash out of the hand also means our Maxi is going to get even better. Let's start Wombo Combo in. 
And this is the normal, this is normal summon Ash combo. Ash get Poplar, Poplar get Activate, Poplar, search for the Sinful Spools, Snake Eye, go into the Link Rebo, get back the Poplar, then we're going to activate the Ash, just kidding, we're going to Sinful Spools first, get our Jet Synchron Summon from the hand, you can summon it from the deck as well. Now we're going to activate the Ash, send the Link Rebo, summon the Flamburger, Flamburger is here. Link them both off into the IP Mask Arena. That's going to trigger Flamburger to summon two fires from the graveyard. Get summoning that Jet Synchron. Get summoning that Snake Eye Ash. Go into the Formula Synchron. Synchron draw a card. That's going to get the Oak. We're going to discard a card to summon our Jet Synchron back. Link into the Promethean Princess. Princess activate. Resummon the Flamburger. Link off. Both of those two into the Sprite Elf. Ban in the TCG, ban in the OCG. Get that Formula Synchron back on the field. Activate Flamburger. Set our IP Mask Arena, and this is our board for the opponent's turn. We can activate Quick Synchro with the Formula Synchron. Flamburger can summon the IP Mask Arena. We can activate Sprite Elf, summon Monster, uh, resummon our Formula Synchron from the graveyard. And when Flamburger goes to the graveyard, he resummons two level 1 fires. We also have. Promethean Princess in the graveyard to activate. If opponent summons a monster, it'll summon itself, pop a fire monster, pop a card on field. Did not summon the swarm ship, but that's so much interaction. Of course, we also have Effect Fair Maxi in the hand. Opponent Kaiju in us. Let's fire off that Maxi. Fire off that Flamburger. Summon our IP Mask Arena. Quick Synchro, the Formula Synchron, and the Snake Eyes Flamberg into the Barondafleur. Get our negates going. Resummon the Masquerina, trigger the Flamburger, summon two monsters from the graveyard, Maxi, activate. Phone if you summon any more monsters, you are going to let us draw a bajillion cards. Snake Eyes Ash, add Snake Eyes Ash to the hand, so we got follow up plays for the next turn. Opponent with the Lightning Storm, we are going to in response activate IP Masquerina. Quick link into an Appaloosa with three negates. Opponent pops nothing because this was summoned with IP Masquerina. <laughs> Our Poplar is going to activate, equip itself uh, as a face-up spell trap. We got three Monster Negates, one Omni. We got Effect Veiler. We got Ash for the next turn. We still got Pop if opponent summons anything. And opponent knows they've learned their lesson. They got nothing. All right, here is the full deck list. I'm going to go through each card. And we'll talk about things you might want to substitute. Uh, let's get going. Effect Veiler, one Jet Synchron, triple Snake Eyes Ash. You're going to want to run all of these. Snake Eyes Oak. We got triple Poplar. We got Triple Max C. We got Triple Ash Blossom. We got the Kestra Fenrir. We got Die Bell Star Black Witch at three. We got two of the Flamburgers. We got one Nibiru. We got one for one Triple Tactics Talent Thrust Subversion. Trip two copies of the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. We got the Divine Temple. We got one, two Call by the Graves. We got the Cross Out Designate. We got one at Secret Sinful Spoils at three. We got the Dramatic Snake Eyes Chase. We got Triple. Imperm, and we got a copy of Sinful Spoils Betrayal. In the extra, we got Formula Synchron, Baron de Fleur, Swords of Supreme Sovereign, Link Reba, Nightmare Phoenix, Hida, IP Masquerina, Sprite Elf, Promethean Princess, two copies of the Amphibious Swarm Ship. Most people are not playing two of this. I think two is what you're going to want to play. All right. Appaloosa, we got the Excess Code Talker, we got the World Sea Dragon Zeolantis, and we got the Underworld Goddess. All right. So if you're playing this deck, right, you're probably looking at this and you're like, oh my god, one, two, three, you are. Four, five, six URs, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen main deck URs, and then you probably don't have a copy of Promethean Princess if you're playing water decks. This card you're going to want, if you want to play any of the decks that come out this year, uh, Promethean Princess is going to go in all of them because they're all going to be fiery. All right. So if you want to play a more budgety version of this, because I know you're thinking that, you're thinking, hey, do, do I have to play all this? Uh, you know, you can definitely cut some stuff, all right? The Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils and the Diabell Star Black Witch, they are free ways to search your Snake Eyes Ash because this gets you the Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. So do you need to run this? It definitely makes the deck better and more consistent, but you could cut all of these and you could cut all of these and you'd still be able to do all the combos in the deck. You don't even need two copies of original Sinful Spoils because you're searching it with your Poplar. You go down to one and with the... Uh, Snake Eyes Poplars, 
you only really need one, although obviously the more copies of it you have, the better. So if you want to play a more budget version of the deck, you could definitely trim back the main deck quite a lot, uh, replace the rest of these cards with, you know, fillers, maybe uh, filler materials or another engine. If you have space for another engine you want to supplement, uh, you could play something else you got. So we could do some sort of watery fire combo if you wanted to play uh, other nonsense in here. Uh, deck is extremely powerful though. So that's the deck. Let's go on to the sink or swims. All right, on to the sink or swim. So this duel was sent to me by someone who said they were drunk dueling. Asbestos, toxic material, uh, and we are drunk dueling. Opponent playing dragon rulers, very spicy, with the dragon ravine summon and tempest from the deck by discarding the uh, baby dragon ruler. And what was that they added to the hand? It is a dragoonity. So we're getting dragoonity, dragon rulers, combo. Going second, and we are drunk. We are drunk, and we're named after a very dangerous material. Uh, don't breathe this, all right? But is this a sink or a swim? Looks like we're playing uh, maybe Goaties or maybe Umi. Who knows? We got Paravia's map. This could be Shark as well. well. Let's get drawn. Opponent has a Monster Negate with a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, Monster Effect Negate, and Destroy. And this Tempest is doing nothing. So opponent has one piece of interaction. Looks like maybe it's Shark's. Well, let's fire off uh, Ice Age Tremora just to bait the Crystal Wing Synchro. I don't think we even wanted Abyss Shark. Like, this has got to be a mistake. You fire Paria's map first. This is one of those cards you have to activate it at the start of your main phase. Otherwise, you can't uh, activate it at all. So, we are definitely drunk dueling right now. Opponent negating. Uh, we're setting three back row because we forgot how to use Paria's map. And opponent gets an additional turn and phase. It's returning to the hand. So we got triple ice barrier, which probably is going to keep us alive. Uh, but we did not get to make any plays on account of our terrible judgment, on account of drinking too much. Is You, you got to stop. You know, keep it under control when you're drunk dueling. Dragoonity Phalanx is here. Summoning the Dragoonity Knight. Dragoonity Knight equipping a monster from the equip zone to the field. Dragon Ruler banishing two monsters to summon itself. Going into the Romulus. Activating the Dragoonie Knight in the graveyard again. Romulus is activating also. But we're sa I'm feeling safe here. Triple Ice Barrier. I think we're going to live. I think we're going to live. I believe. Dragoonity Lance equipping. Opponent getting another tuner. Going to battle. Getting Ice Barriered. Uh, apparently it did not get its attack reduced. But we do get to search for the Snopios. Uh, why did opponent's monster be unaffected by that? I'm guessing it's one of these spell traps. Uh, unaffected by trap effects. There you go. Dr Dragoonity Define Lance. So opponent's monster unaffected. But this Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is not unaffected. And it is getting reduced to zero. And we just don't want to take any damage. We're setting that Dragon Ruler's attack to zero. And we uh, we already activated the Snopio to get the Snopio. So we can't activate again. Draw that Silent Angler. All right. Are we going to... We also, again, we, we again forgot to, to activate our Paravia's map. We really don't like this card. Sending title to the graveyard, adding back Dice Shade Tamora. As I said, we are drunk dueling. Opponent activating to negate. It is not going to work. You are negated by the effect of Ice Barry last turn. Opponent learned to read. Ice Shade Tamora summon that Abyss Shark. We're going to summon that Silent Angler, normal summon. Uh, what did we just do? We summoned the title Dragon Ruler by banishing Snopios and Ice Shade Tamora from our hand and graveyard. We don't have any fish in the graveyard to banish to get back to Snopios. Is that a mistake? Who knows? This what, what what is this? This is your board? You don't even have any Xyz? What are you doing? You don't have an Xyz? You literally don't have an Xyz. Why are you playing Abyss Shark if you don't have an Xyz? Alright, you know what? That's enough roasting for one day. Uh, we're getting in. Abyss Shark crash. <laughs> This is really a drunk. This is a drunk duel. I, I was reading the email. He's like, "Oh, I was drunk duel," and I'm like, "Okay, sure, sure, whatever." And then I look at this replay, and I'm like, "You know what, sir? You were drunk. You do not deserve this, uh, opponent." <laughs> Dragoonity whirlwind, firing off that ice barrier. We're gonna get another uh, another watery monster added to our hand. Are we gonna remember to use Paravia's map this whole game though? Again, the big fish. You can't play, my my friend. Do not play this while drunk. This is not the sort of deck you can play while drunk. All right. You want to play an easy deck. When you're drunk, you play Sword Soul. You do the Mo-Yi combo, all right? You can't mess it up. Uh, you do not use Deep Sea Coelacanth, which requires searching five cards from the deck and then doing a bunch of combo plays. Uh, opponent. They got their Dragoonity Knight back. They are searching. They're getting Dragoonity Legatus. 
discarding things, activating the effect of Tempest in the graveyard. I like that both of us are playing Dragon Rulers. Dragon Rulers are hot right now. Maybe we should be playing the Fire Dragon Ruler in our Fire decks. You let me know what you think about that. Dragonity Knight is back. Hitting the Silent Angler. Hitting the Abyss Shark. Uh, and then the title is bigger than the uh, Tempest. They're not all the same side. Alright. Title come back to the hand. Are we going to remember to activate our Paravia's map at the beginning of our main phase one? If you do this time, I will give you a swim. If you do not, you are getting a sink. You did it! I literally did not know if he was going to do it or not. Alright, we get the Beautiful Princess. Pay half our life points. Beautiful activate. Some in the Lifeless Leaf Fish. Go to the graveyard. Our Goaty. We are playing Goaties. Benish to get the title on the field. No way to discard, I guess. Could have discarded the Super Ancient Deep, deep Sea King Kill. The Deep Sea King Coelacanth. Uh, and we're not even going to Monster Reborn one of opponent's monsters. They got so many cool things in the graveyard. All right, uh, we're going to battle. We're hitting that Dragoon Knight. We are doing nothing. We're ending the turn. Tempest goes back to the hand. We're not going to fire off Monster Reborn. Not going to use this big fish. We got one Synchro play. We are drunk. Clearly, we're getting more drunk as this duel goes on. Uh, in response to the Dragon Ravine, we're activating Shift. Not sure why. Is this is this the moment? This is this really the moment you wanted to activate that? Arian Post is here. Opponent adding a monster to the hand. Arian Post going to activate Banish from the deck. A Zep. We're going to Synchro again. What are we going to Synchro into? We're going to Synchro into the eight. Get that Ashcan. Banish opponent's Dragoonity Knight again. Is this really the timing that you wanted? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Arian Post activate. Get searching. We're going to get the A A A A knock. Aenok, this is an ocean, all right? O-C-E-N, ocean. Uh, the, all the goaties are like English words, re readjusted, all right. Enoch to the hand. Azcan get banished. Azcan banish the shift, come back. We know how it goes. All right, took us like four turns to get here. Seven turns to get here. But here we are doing our normal goatee plays. Dragoonity Phalanx. Summon in the uh, Dragoonity Knight. Tempest is going to come back again, I assume. There it is, Tempest is back. Activate that Dragoonity Knight. Get the Mist Valley Baby Rock. Again, sent to the graveyard. It's going to resummon itself. Not a hard once per turn, by the way. Not a once per turn at all. Go into the Borlode Savage Dragon. That's going to give us uh, nothing because we have no links to the graveyard. So no negates. Where? What happened to our Romulus? I guess Romulus got shuffled back into the extra deck. Uh, or he got banished. There he is. He's banished. Opponent hitting. Our Azcan. Opponent doing nothing. Because they can't crash over this title is doing so much work for us. All right, maybe if you're drunk dueling, you just want to have a copy of title. That's the lesson. Shift comeback. Uh, we're gonna draw a card. All right, now. All right, here's my here's my big blimp. Opponent has no has no interaction. Right, big blimp play. You activate your monster reborn. Summon anything. Literally summon anything. And then you tribute summon your deep sea king. You tribute summon it. Are we gonna do that? No, we're. We're sending. Okay. Oh, actually, that's even better. Yes, send your Deep Sea King to the graveyard with your Dragon Ruler uh, to search for a fish to the graveyard, and then just activate Monster Reborn. That's a big. That's a big brain play. That is big brain. Abyss Keeper is here. We're gonna summon our Eonok from the hand with the Abyss Keeper, and we're gonna banish, and we're gonna add the Goaty Trap. And it is finally time, and we're drunk, so are we going to do this right? What are we even going to summon? I don't know what the drunkest combo you can do with Deep Sea King is. Uh, let's find out. Activate, discard, fish, 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 fish. What do you do with them? Summon a Ravenous Croco Dragon. Love to see it. Draw a card. Summon a Coral Dragon. Love to see it. Summon a White or a Monoceros. Love to see it. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. All right, the skill has improved. All right, the alcohol is wearing off. The hangover is going to be here in a minute. Oh, drawing this prismatic call by the grave. You should have you didn't should have mentioned this. All right, this is beautiful prismatic. All right, got to flex your cards here. We're popping our own. Hold on a second. Why did we do that? We popped our own fish. Our, we clearly are drunk. Summoning a coral anemone. Uh, fish activate in the graveyard to baboost. Uh, resummon. Uh, I don't. What? What was that? <laughs> We're ending the turn. What nonsense! <laughs> this is nonsense. How did we not get lethal there? What was going on? Why did we target our own monster? What? We couldn't pop the the dragon ruler. I don't think it has a protection effect. 
Um, so we clearly are drunk, all right? Let's let's just see if we manage to waddle our way into success <laughs> after all these misplays. Opponent hitting our super ancient deep sea king, uh, equipping it so we can't resummon it again. Hitting our Marinces Coral Anemone. Maybe our opponent's drunk too. Opponent's struggling. Uh, and summoning the Ancient Deep Sea King. They, they don't have any fish to get from the deck, so it's not going to be as good for them. Alright, Abyss Shark is here. Activate, summon itself. Opponent Ash Blossoming. <laughs> How are we going to get there? Yo, I, this duel, this is a, this is the, now we're in like a dual prison. This is like dual purgatory. Tidal. Fuel the fire that is this victory. All right, Tidal, get back onto the field. Activate Lifeless Leaf Fish. Shuffle our fish back into the deck. Draw the Deepest Depths Field Spell. Activate Paces. Summon the Abyss Shark. Summon the White Arm Monosaurus again. We have, what are we even gonna get from the graveyard? We're gonna get, we're gonna get the Tuna. Paces, all right. Summon the Croco Dragon. Croco Dragon draw a card, but he is tiny. He is a little tiny Croco Dragon. We're gonna Baboost our fish. We're going to hit for a little bit of damage. And this is not lethal. <laughs> we got this Goaty Cosmos. What is this doing? Fish can't be destroyed. All right. Is that really what we want? We'll find out. What can we do with all these tunas? We don't have a level four. Do we have another Croco Dragon in our extra deck? We're just going to have to find out. Opponent. Comboing some more. Opponent. Probably, probably like also wasted, like I said. This is just like double wasted duel. Opponent trying to get lethal damage. We're firing off the Goaty Cosmos. Goaty Cosmos effect. Uh, it's got four effects. Who even knows what they all do? Uh, we're summoning a Deep Beyond. How did we even do that? What? Uh, eight plus special summon a fish synchro monster from your extra deck. This is treat as a synchro summon. Because uh, we have so many banished fish monsters. That's what it does. It just summons Deep Beyond for free. And it's a Synchro Summon. Deep Beyond, activate, banish every card on the field. And it's going to come back and it's going to be the biggest Deep Beyond I've ever seen in my life. Alright, you know what? Alright, you know what? I was like, this Drunk Duel is going all over the place. But if this is the way you win, I am proud of you. Alright, that was an amazing Drunk Duel. Thank you for sending this asbestos. And we'll see if you win the Synchro Swim. It, it, you got it. it all depends on who is the next sinker swimmer. All right, stop flexing here. Just get for lethal damage. We've been here for a million years. It's time to get lethal damage, my friend. Get in with your goatee for 1750, and that is drunk dueling. All right, let's go on to the next sinker swim. Alrighty, on to the next sinker swim. This duel was sent to us by Pianarus. Uh, Pianarus is here with uh, Gishkis. Gishki Ice Jades combination I have not tried out myself, so want to see how this works out. Opponent going first, playing Gigantic Sprite. Sprite Live Twins. Let's see what sort of board they can make. We'll see if this is worthy of a sink or swim. This feels like the sort of deck you will be playing sober. This will not be another Drunk Duel, all right? Drunk Duels, uh, as entertaining as they are, <laughs> they lack some of the refined quality of a sober duel. Melfi of the Forest. Adding a Melfi to the hand. Opponent ending the turn. Getting their Melfis on the field. All right, now how do we break this board? Because Gishkis can do some board breaking, that's for sure. Ice Jade. Adrian Ron is summoning itself. Discarding the Ice Jade Tremor opponent. Firing off the Sprite Elf. Getting back the Jet. Jet going to activate search for a spell. Ice Jade token is here. Opponent firing off Melfi Caddy. Melfi Caddy can summon Melfis, I think, from the deck. Uh, just kidding. Maybe? Who knows? I forgot what the Melfis all do. Return to the hand, add a beast monster. They're getting a Melfi Penny. Uh, opponent, firing off the Melfi of the Forest, targeting and activating this Melfi Penny. What is happening? What is the, what does this Melfi do? Melfi of the Forest. Uh, target monster, it, the, cannot attack. That was not really the thing you wanted to target with that. Opponent going into a Herald of the Arc Light with their Melfis, which is a Omni Negate and any uh, card going to the graveyard is banished instead, I believe. Any monster sent from the hand or main deck is banished instead. So where are our monsters? They're in the graveyard. Why are they not in the banished zone? Who knows? Spire off the Ice Jade Cradle. Opponent, Ash Blossoming our Cradle. But now, we also got this Manifestation. We, we, we still have not summoned our Gishki Grimness. This is going to lock us into not summoning... Uh, we're not going to be able to summon or attack with any non-ritual monsters, but looks like opponent is negating it. Ice Jade, Gamir, Adrian activating in response. Opponent 
Fire and Off Sprite Red to negate our Aegirene. What are we going to do? We're negated. We're popped. Our, Ice, our Grimness is popped. It's not searching. Tremora is going to activate in Graveyard and resummon the Ice Jagamir Aegirene. Very nice. We're going to fire off this Manifestation Summon from the deck to Aegirene. And oh, we have just gone straight into Ice Jade's. Ice Jade Erosion is here. Omni Negate with the Ice Jades. That Drone Lockbird is doing absolutely nothing against us. We are done searching for the turn. Ice Jade crashing that Sprite. Opponent just has a Sprite Red on the field. We got the Ice Jade Erosion to negate by sending our Adrian to the graveyard. Opponent Feather Dustin is going to have to let that go. If opponent targets or attacks our Ice Jade, Adrian is going to summon a Water Monster from our graveyard. That's going to get the Ice Jade, uh, Grimny, Gishki Grimness going. All right, opponent going into Sprite Elf. Sprite Elf going to activate resummon from the graveyard. The Sprite Jet. We are activating in response to Gamir Adrian. Opponent activating in response. Going to banish their Sprite Elf from the graveyard. And banish the Gamir Adrian. Oh, sorry. They're banishing their Sprite Elf from the field. The Jet is here. Gamir Adrian is gone. But the Ice Jay Manifestation is activating. If a face-up Ice Jay leaves the field by an opponent's card... Banish, target a card, opponent controls, banish it, that sprite red is gone. Wow, what what a duel. We're, we're doing a lot of interactive things with these Ice Shade Gishkis. This is a very cool combination. I'm going to be completely honest. That is quite sweet. Sprite Starter is here getting a, another sprite from the deck. Going into the Gigantic. Gigantic and activate search. Get the carrot. Opponent going to battle. Attacking, triggering the Ice Jade Aegirene. That's going to trigger summon the Gishki Gr Grimness. Opponent Ash Blossoming it. You know what? That's not the end of the world. We're not dead here. Opponent doesn't get to destroy our Adrian unless they also give up their carrot. They can attack with the carrot, then the Adrian will be destroyed, but they'll trade. So, did they do that? No, they popped the Grimness. Alright. So, opponent leaving us with the Adrian. We got the Abyss in the hand. If we draw any Gishki spell, we're going to be having a field day. Looks like, you know what? We don't even need to, because watch this. Summon the Abyss. Search for the Shadow. We link off into Sprite Elf. See, I know how to play this deck. Activate, get the Abyss. Oh, we're even farther. We're going for the Grimness. Grimness, get the Abyss. We get another search. Get the Gishki Vision. We're going to search for our Gishki Monster. We're going to search for our Gishki Ritual Spell. Get Necromirror, and we can Necromirror steal opponent's monster. Uh, but opponent can negate with the Carrot. So opponent should negate the Carrot. Negate Carrot, negate the Necromirror. And then tributing their sprite, gigantic sprite, and then we don't get a ritual. So let's see what happens. IP Masquerina is here. We're going to fire off the Necromirror opponent, choosing not to negate. This is the dumbest not negate of their life. They, they really should have negated this. And opponent realizing they've made a big mistake. They are done. Love to see it. This was a very good duel, all right? If I was choosing Drunk Duel or this refined gameplay, I would be giving you the swim. But you guys get to decide. Vote in the poll in the video description and let me know which is the sink, which is the swim. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.